So the next question is, what happens next? And can Venezuela's chaos actually impact the United States? Well, for expert insight, we are joined by the former U.S. ambassador to Venezuela, Charles Shapiro. Ambassador, thanks for joining us. Are you surprised by what you're seeing? Is this the result of a socialist government that essentially spent all the money it got from oil without putting any away for a rainy day? You nailed it. The price of oil is cyclical. Everybody knows that. When prices were high, they spent it all and didn't save anything. Now they're low and they're, they're stuck. So what happens from here? I mean, we hear that the Chinese are giving them some restructuring of the debt, but that doesn't help the people who can't get access to food, uh, decent medical care. They're on two days a week in the public sector. They're in being, being encouraged to do that in the private sector. I mean, how far down does uh, this country go? Listen, every time I think Venezuela's hit bottom, things get worse, and they, they will continue to do so. Uh, Adam Shapiro, my cousin, uh, <laughs> laid it all out. Things, things are good. Um, they, they, centralized planning doesn't work. Those price caps don't work that they tried to set in place for food, and in fact, it, it exacerbated the shortages. Um, the opposition is, is more unified than it's ever been. It's working hard to get a recall referendum going. And um, the state of emergency called by the president, I think, if anything, is, ha has solidified the resolve of the opposition to recall President Maduro. Well, that's the question. Is, of course, President Maduro blaming the, uh, the capitalists of the West for creating this predictably? Um, how does this all, how could this impact the United States? Uh, well, fortunately, uh, oil production elsewhere is up, and we're no longer dependent on Venezuelan oil the way we were before. Um, so I don't see it having a major impact on U.S. economy. Um, I'd like to get those fires out near Fort McMurray and get yeah. Canadian oil production back, back in line. Um, and that million, dollar, million barrels <laughs> a day of Canadian oil would be real nice. But, but the truth of the matter is... Uh, with oil at the price it's at, even if it goes up some more, the Venezuelan government still can't get out of the fix it's in. Well, so the question is, can Maduro survive? You said that the opposition is more united now than it ever has been. I would imagine that you would think that getting a different type of government in there could be the only solution. Look, never underestimate the ability of uh, autocratic <laughs> governments to stay in power. We've seen that around the world. Um, if, if mismanagement were the reason for governments to get to leave office, the North Koreans would be the first to go. Um, they, they can hold on, but I, I think that the opposition is actually using the constitution that Hugo Chavez right. wrote um, <laughs> and to try to recall Maduro. Right. They are more unified than ever. Oil prices are low. The Brazilians who poured money into Chavez's elections and Maduro's election are distracted and certainly aren't yeah. going to do that anymore. Aren't they the ever? Organization of American States has got a secretary general who All knows right. what democracy is and what it isn't and, we, and, and isn't afraid to say we it. We will continue to follow what is chaos and a real mess. Uh, Ambassador Charles Shapiro, thank you so much for your insight this afternoon. We really appreciate it. It's a pleasure, Ashley. Okay.